Jim, eh. no one will ever accuse Tony Khan of being modest when it comes to his wrestling IQ and certainly his methods of seeking out information or crowd approval or whatever it may be. So before we even get to the AEW Worlds and Media Scrum, and there's a lot there to talk about, I have some audio here Jace Nakarado pulled. This is from the media call before the event, a few days before the event. Tony answering a question about his booking strategy for 2024. Let's go to this. Feel free to tell me to stop at any point. I'm, I'm, I probably will fairly quickly. It's a great question. I mean, we have a great group of people right now in my office. Uh, just as an example, uh, yesterday you had a great group with uh, Brian Danielson, Mike Mansuri, uh, Will Washington, Jimmy Jacobs, Sanjay Dutt, Sarah Stock, uh, and Dean Malenko, and uh, several others. Uh, that were in my office throughout the day at various points. And Brian had his, his match and people were in and out. Uh, I think everybody had great points and there were a number of other people. Uh, but I did come in with a lot of it. And I think we've been on uh, an incredible run of shows. And this is a great, uh, you, this wasn't quite the setup I was looking for. So I'll see if I still get it. Uh, but i very excited to talk about the science of the booking. And I think in particular, uh, <laughs> what, it recently... <laughs> The science of the, the booking. The science of the booking. Oh, my God. He listed a a variety of people there who have th their own individual talents, and I'm not saying anything bad about many or most of them, possibly all of them. I can't remember the whole goddamn list. But you can't have – you can't just find, you know, 15 people at a gym that all know how to work out in some various way and say, okay – Let's all work together and write a fucking mystery novel. It, it, it. Out of all the people he just named, I have a feeling Sanjay Dutt might be the most reasonable. You know, as a matter of fact, probably, and one of the more experienced. Yeah, for real. Well, let's go back to Tony. Let's go back to Tony. We've had some of our best shows we've ever done. And this year, if you look at 2023, and, you know, just to use as a... Uh, Samples, you know, you can look at uh, fan feedback from different shows. One site that measures fan feedback is Cage Match. Look <laughs> at the top 100 shows this year and look at how many of them are from AEW. And if you throw uh, <sighs> this version of ROH in there too, you get some <sighs> some more. But uh, it's pretty incredible. And the top 100 shows that have over 50 votes, top 100 shows that even more so that have over 100 votes. Over 100? And look at how many of them happened in 2023 from AEW or uh, even a couple more from ROH. And uh, that speaks pretty highly, I thought. But uh, Let's stop it there for a moment. <sighs> Cage match, we've joked about it, but here he is citing it as one of the places he goes to for validation. Well, you know how you can get the fan feedback? How many people bought a fucking ticket? What were the ratings this week? How many pay-per-views did we sell? That's the fan feedback. What he's looking for is fan compliments. And that's two different things. And he, he, he said, well, such and such had over 100 votes. Motherfucker, you've got a national television program with supposedly supposed to have over a million viewers, but it doesn't. But you're trying to sell tickets in buildings that hold tens of thousands of people. And you're trying to sell hundreds of thousands of pay-per-views, but you're looking for feedback from 50 to 100 people on cagematch.fucking.com and how they rate the matches. And that it determined, no. A collection of the ratings that other fans made. What, who gives a shit? Point, did, did, did Siskel and Ebert rate... Fucking whatever blockbuster movie, four thumbs up or four or five snaps up or whatever. It didn't have any correlation to how much money the movie made. You And you can't, again, take a subset. That's why he's doing this, because he's deluded himself into thinking that all the fans think like he did when he was in his basement doing this on the internet. 
and and the ones that read Cage Match because he never had normal fucking friends. They just went to the goddamn wrestling matches. And that's it's it, say it's it's just so minute. He's looking for for compliments from fans rather than feedback because he gets the feedback in terms of the sales and the viewership. And the feedback from fans that he gets that he doesn't like, he says is bad faith. But let's go back to the science of the booking. Uh, Much more so, I would talk TV ratings. And I'm really excited about the lift and collision ratings we've seen as the competition has continued to increase. We've seen historically that nothing takes a toll on wrestling ratings more so than the most powerful media empire in the world that is the National Football League. Uh, The NFL, I, I speak from experience and from within the beast, that it is the most powerful and most efficient and best run media operation in the world. And uh, don't point out how good other people do that (laughs) shit. He doesn't have to spend that much time putting the NFL over, does he? In recent weeks has taken the top dozen spots or more on cable on Saturday, just the NFL. And uh, yet the collision ratings have continued to increase. And I do think there is a science behind this methodology, and I do think they've been <laughs> probably the strongest set of shows we've ever done consecutively. And no, those were the first few shows you did with Punk and FTR. Those were the strongest shows you did consecutively. Well, he's talking about getting the numbers back up to four and five hundred thousand. They started at eight hundred. I uh, so I, I think there's a great team, but also I personally have never felt more invigorated and on top of the booking. There's a great group of people oh, on Saturdays oh. and Wednesdays, and that was a good sample of people uh, that were there. And I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting uh, a couple people. And then there's people that weren't there that, you know, might be there on a Saturday. Um, but there was a lot of people throughout the day uh, that would come in and, and contribute an idea. Um, and uh, certainly. And then sit in the back of the room and make sure that nothing bad happened to that idea between showtime. I know, and- that sounds like the biggest haphazard mess I've ever heard of. People just coming in and pitching ideas the day of the fucking show. How did the booking committee work? Did the booking committee work just like that? Good God, no. Whether it was the booking committee in WCW or Vince's creative team or whatever. No, this stuff... You didn't just have the guys coming in day of show giving random ideas. It was written well in advance in those days. I know Vince has the habit of tearing stuff up or had the habit. Vince McMahon didn't tear stuff up that day for shit the the talent wanted to do. It was for shit he wanted to do. He overruled his own writers. But But no, you don't just have guys wandered in and out and great minds pitching ideas. Good, then I'll have one of the writing teams sit down with you, Mr. Talent, next week, and you can give him all your ideas, and we'll put them in a pipeline. That's No, it doesn't work that way. They may think it does because they're not used to doing this. You know, this is still a relatively new thing, the idea of bookers doing shoot interviews or talking about what they're doing. How many of them just come out and say, you know, I think I'm doing a great job. I think I'm booking the best I ever have. It, well, it's, it, it is a relatively new thing, but I don't know that anybody ever said that in public before, and most time you wouldn't say it in private unless it was dusty and it was true. Uh, I, I felt com- coming in really prepared in recent weeks. You know, something I've really enjoyed has been the Connell Classic. And again, <laughs> you didn't give me the perfect setup to talk about this stuff. Uh, so I, uh, I might come back to it, but, uh, I've been conducting some pretty experimental booking and <laughs> I, really enjoyed- I gotta stop it. I can't take this anymore. So far he has just said some just crazy things. Experimental booking. That's now what he's doing. The science of it. And I can break down the science of it going into world's end and why I think there's a lot to learn from it. And, uh, I think uh, I might as well now that I've popped the can off that I'll just keep talking. So uh, <laughs> I think it's really interesting because uh, when you do an experiment, there's an experimental group and a control group. And for me, the control was everything we've been doing. And I took basically the things I've been doing and tried to keep them consistent. And uh, then 
began doing the experiment that was the Continental Classic, and uh, the nature of it is a very sports-based presentation, and it <sighs> has some changes from... Uh, wait, 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 wait. The, the sports-based presentation is why Moxley's match spent half the time out in the fucking cheap seats, right? That's where they contest most sporting events, in the fucking stands. Go ahead, I'm sorry. For example, which in this case, I would say the scoring system of three points for a win versus two makes it uh, a very different incentive to go for the wins. And also, <laughs> I think... the biggest difference possibly is nobody allowed at ringside and no outside interference and that's probably a misconception from people who don't actually watch the G1 uh, because uh, there has been outside interference and I think that was something we did to, to make it different and wait what did he just say I, I don't apparently they have interference in the G1 but they don't in his version of the G1 or whatever that we've already established that then in that case, they've just killed any run-in ever in any other of their matches because they've established they can just forbid it and you can't do it. So they're allowing any run-ins that happen from this point forward. I believe we are about five minutes into the question about the booking strategy for 2024. Dad, I, I don't know what the fuck he's saying. He's talking about his experimental booking and, of course, the science of the booking. He was vaccinated with a phonograph needle. A little bit more of this before we get to the brilliant performance that was the world's end media scrum. More from Tony Khan. Then when I look at the tournament itself and executing it, it's the most fun I've ever had working on something. I love working on the Continental Classic, and I think I'm, it's been so tremendous and such a highlight of the holidays for me. It really put a smile on my face on Christmas. Wait, well, let me Going ask back. a question here. How do you work on the... It's a fucking tournament. That's the easiest thing to book in wrestling because <laughs> you just goddamn write the fucking names down and decide who's going to win. But who did the finishes? Because all the finishes sucked. That was That should have been some work that he did. Who... <laughs> the, the idea of the talent that was picked, that was his fault. Good God, how did he have fun working on this shit? It was the greatest thing I've ever done. Eh. So tremendous and such a highlight of the holidays. For me, it really put a smile on my face on Christmas, going back and watching some of it with my family, and I think uh, <laughs> being able to watch the very best of AEW and show them what we're doing. On Christmas, he made his, on oh. Christmas, he made his family sit down and watch some of these tournament matches. All right, what does Tony want to do now? Guys, I got to show you the best of my Continental Classic tournament. <laughs> you think does he have a girlfriend? <laughs> I believe he does. I've heard that, or at least in the past he has. I'm assuming he still does. I mean, why would she leave a Well, I mean, what family like is he discussing? Was he there with Shad? Like, here's how I'm spending your money, Dad? Or who was the family that he was... He doesn't have children. Do they present highlight reels of all their work at Christmas time to the other members of the family? <laughs> yeah, Shad's like, hey, here's my new bumper. <laughs> Fooled you, it's the what? same old bumper. No, watch the crash test dummy here on this one. We pull it, pull it in at 50 miles an hour. And boom. Well, it's let's uh, finish this up. All it's right. been a highlight. Please, let's finish it. I believe the exact term was so tremendous and a highlight of the holidays to go back and watch with my family. Let's go back to Tony and his booking, the science of his booking, the science of booking in general. I don't know what the hell is happening. And. For the Continental Classic final this weekend, I think Eddie Kingston and John Moxley, there's so much story between the two men. And I thought the face-to-face -face segment at the end of the Brian Danielson-Eddie Kingston match, which many people felt was the culmination of the entire tournament so far, the best match yet, it was tremendous. So when you do an experiment, you have an experimental group and a control group. If the control is what we've been doing and, and the things that have been on AEW and what we're doing, the experiment was... Uh, increasing uh, the allocation of this very meat and potatoes, sports-based, old-school <laughs> pro wrestling at its oh. finest, in my opinion, Continental Classic. And the experiment, I think, has been very He thinks successful. that's old-school sports-based wrestling. He thinks he sounds smart here and it has yielded really interesting results. And 
one thing I would point to in particular is that ratings increase on Collision because Collision probably leaned into being a bit more sports-based presentation to begin with. And now with the additional Continental Classic content, I think what we've been able to do and what I focused on with the booking of Collision that I think has probably been the best set of shows we've ever had and has really yielded positive, uh, tangible results on paper that I can show now with the ratings increases in the recent weeks, despite the competition getting much harder because there is, unlike other... Again, he was asked a question, and now he's just again going into a big defense. I'm, I'm going to cut my throat if 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 this isn't right. over soon. We're going to end uh, this in a second. One last could we thing. just cut him off right here? Well, one last thing, Jace recommended we hear what he had to say about Riho. Let me go oh, to the uh, timestamp here. Here's uh, Tony Khan on Riho. Fuck you, Jace. Once again, Tony Khan on Riho. Jace, a very nice man. She really, when you look back. Uh, at AEW now and what I'm talking about, you know, somebody who has had some of the best matches and certainly to get the best pro wrestling uh, week to week, I think somebody that can go out there and from the very first dynamite, not only have great matches, but we've also seen somebody that delivers ratings is Rio. Who's he talking about so now? I think Rio? Rio is a fascinating matchup in particular with, you know, of course, by design, Rio got taken out by Ruby, Soraya, and Tony, and has come back for revenge, and she's gotten revenge on Ruby and Soraya. And I joke to all the women, I think this really reminds me of uh, Kill Bill, because <laughs> it's like they all put this woman down, and she's come back for revenge. And this group, they don't even like each other, the individual people anymore. <laughs> like, you know, Tony's not even friends with them anymore, and they're fighting with each other. And, uh, and like, yet... Um, they all have that in common that, you know, Rio is coming for all of them. Uh, he and, would, he, he uh, says Rio has great matches and it's and like he's talking ratings. about a different person. And who, what is he seeing? Who is telling him this? Is he, is nobody capable, even the, the stars, the veterans, not able to give him an honest opinion? No, Tony. She's an amateur indie girl from Japan. She's never going to get over. It just looks embarrassing. You've been sold a bill of goods. Move on. Can nobody be honest with him? Was he going to hear that from Brian Danielson or Jimmy Jacobs or Michael Mansuri or Sanjay Dutt or who else was in that room? Sarah Stock? The booking minds that make up the uh, science of the AEW booking. 